In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are still kneeling at the crib, at the manger, in this most beautiful time of the birth of the Savior in Bethlehem. And then, then eight days after the birth of our Lord was his first shedding of blood with the circumcision to show he had a real human nature and that he already was willing to suffer already for the love of souls. So he shed his first blood of the five main times he will shed his blood, the first one at eight, at eight days old and the last four in the Passion. And then to, uh, on Sunday is the 13 days after Christ's birth, which is when, <clears throat> 13 days before, the three kings who came from three different regions, one of them as far as India, where Father Pankras is from, the southern India, one of the kings came from there, Saint, Ga Saint Gaspar. So the star led these three kings, and Sunday will be the Feast of Epiphany, when the three kings with all their camels and all their servants and entourage, filled Jerusalem and made them wonder and stirred the hatred of Herod, and they would come following the star to Bethlehem. So these are these great events, all surrounding the, the child's birth, his circumcision, and the name he was given, and the epiphany. The Epiphany is the original Feast of Christ the King, because he's king of all nations, and kings adored him. President Trump should be adoring Jesus Christ in the Mass. He should be receiving Holy Communion on his knees. He should be going to confession like everyone else. The whole Senate, or the whole uh, Supreme Court and Congress, they should all be adoring Jesus Christ. His name should be on our Constitution. His religion should be the one supported by the state. His heart should be on our flag. And imagine what peace, what happiness it would bring to our nation if Christ was truly king. There wouldn't be laws insulting God, such as abortion, divorce laws, sodomite laws that offend him so much. The interest would be not to brainwash children to be destroyed in their, in their purity and innocence, as is happening even down to the kindergartners today. <clears throat> but it would be the truth that would be taught. The truth. And it's the truth that frees the mind from enslavement of darkness. One of the enslavement of darknesses today is evolution. People who believe in evolution, they really become like apes. They really become what they profess. As the Psalms say, they become stupid like the stone gods that they adore. And evolutionists become like animals that they adore. They become monkeys and live and, and have morality of monkeys. And even monkeys, they fall lower than that. So, <clears throat> so we adore Jesus Christ in, the, in, the, in his childhood. And he told us, unless you be converted and become like children... You won't enter the kingdom of heaven. So let's, let me share with you some glasses of wine. And one of these glasses of wine is first from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He had such a love for the Virgin Mary, and he had such a poetic way of preaching. Here's an example. All food is as dry as husks to the soul, unless it is steeped in this oil of Jesus' holy name. It is tasteless, food is tasteless, think of french fries, unless seasoned with this salt, the salt of Jesus' name. If you write it, it has no savor for me, unless I read there the name of Jesus. If you discourse or converse, it has no taste, unless the name of Jesus shall sound. 
The name of Jesus is honey to the mouth, music to the ear, gladness to the heart. It is healing. Is one among us sad? Let Jesus come into his heart and spring from thence to his lips. Behold, with the dawning of that name, every cloud scatters and clear day returns. Has anyone fallen into sin? And does he run despairingly towards the toils of death? If he but invokes the name of life, the name of Jesus, will not life be renewed within him? And then, close St. Bernard, and then all the Psalms. The, the Psalms are full of that love and adoration to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let all be glad that hope in thee, O Lord, they shall rejoice forever, and thou shalt dwell in them, and all shall glory in thee, who love thy name. O Lord, they shall walk in the light of thy countenance, and in thy name they shall rejoice all the day. According to thy name, O God, so also is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of justice. And other examples of the Psalms. I will wait on thy name, O Lord, for it is good in the sight of thy saints, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and make glory in thy praise. And that's just a few examples of the, the glory and adoration to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that all the saints had a great veneration for the name of Jesus Christ. The church herself teaches us reverence for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sacred ceremonies of the Mass, at the name of Jesus, all berettas come off. And every head bows during the singing of the Gloria. And, and then the whole liturgy is filled with the reverence to the name of Jesus. When the priest is at the altar, at the name of Jesus, he bows towards the tabernacle. And such reverence in heaven must be among the angels and the saints, at the very face of Jesus Christ, in the name of God himself. So, we know St. Ignatius of Loyola, one of the emblems for the Jesuit order was the name of Jesus, I. H S Yeshua, the the three letters from Jesus's name in Hebrew, Yeshua I H S. An easy way to remember it, as one priest told me when I was little, it means I have suffered. Uh, that's one of the other interpretations, but it's actually the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the devils can't say this name. He they cannot pronounce his name. They cannot say it. They cannot bear to hear it. Whenever they hear the name of Jesus, they, are, they flee. And same with the name of the Virgin Mary. They cannot stand it. And that's why the devils, they cannot address Christ as Jesus and Mary. And that's why in the exorcism, the name of Jesus and Mary are used frequently. And, and the devil is told, depart from here. Depart from this person in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus crucified. Now, listen to St. Anthony of Padua. His statue is right here. St. Anthony held the child Jesus because <clears throat> his soul was like a child. He says these words, Jesus, his name. His name was called Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. It's the name of sweetness, the name of delight, name of comforting the sinners, and full of hope. His name is joyful in the heart, music in the ear, honey in the mouth. He's quoting St. Bernard here. Of this joyful name, the bride says in the canticles, Thy name is as oil poured out. Thy name, O Jesus, is as oil poured out. Canticles chapter 1 verse 2. Note that oil has five properties. It floats on other liquids. It softens what is hard. 
like bread. Italians, like, he was Italian, so he's going to actually use this example. It, uh, the Italians have a custom of taking hard crust bread, Italian bread, and you dip it in the oil, olive oil, mixed in with some salt and some sometimes uh, red pepper or whatever. And it, it's really, a, it's, it, makes the, it makes the hard crusty bread softer to eat and tasty. So oil softens what is hard. It smooths what is rough. It illuminates what is dark. Oil satisfies the body. And even, even now uh, nutritionists in the 1970s and 80s, there was the big scare, don't eat butter, because butter is fattening. But today all the nutritionists say, no, the brain needs butter and fats. They're healthy for the body. The fats are healthy and needed. So olive oil is one of those fats that is very healthy for the body. And the brain feeds on these fats. And the whole body does. So it satisfies the body. In the same way, the name of Jesus is above every... So now he goes explaining the example. So first, oil floats on other liquids. The name of Jesus floats above every other name of all men and angels. The name of Jesus. For in the name of Jesus... Every knee shall bow in heaven on earth and under the earth. St. Paul says, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. How uh, under the earth? Because the souls in purgatory certainly adore the name of Jesus, but even in hell they're forced to kneel at the name of Jesus Christ. And on the day of judgment, we're going to see the whole human race gathered before the throne of the same Jesus Christ who's hidden here in the Holy Eucharist. But we're going to see Him as He is. You'll see His eyes. You'll see His face that the angels admire. The handsomeness of God Himself. And you'll see His five wounds, which will shine on the Day of Judgment. And among the damned, the damned will be forced to kneel before Him. They'll be cussing. They'll be swearing. You'll hear, you'll hear truck driver words you've never heard before of all different languages blaspheming against Jesus Christ because their hatred for Him. But they will, even the devils in all their ugly, hideous forms will be forced to kneel before Jesus Christ. And even, even our worldly politicians who hate Him are doing everything to spit on Him and crucify Him Hillary Clinton will kneel before Jesus Christ. Obama will be forced to kneel before Jesus Christ. All the Muslims in hell and the Jews and all the schismatics and all the false religions and all bad Catholics and bad priests too will be forced to kneel before Jesus Christ. Unwillingly. But the friends of our Lord, we will obviously, they will gladly kneel before Him. And, and lie prostrate before him. So, at every knee shall bow before the name of Jesus. St. Anthony continues, If you preach this name, you soften hard hearts. Because when the, when the priest will say the name of Jesus, he'll often explain what it means. And Jesus, Yeshua, means the Savior because Jesus Christ is the Savior. And it's, it's metaphysically accurate. Because the name defines the essence of a thing. And the essence of Jesus Christ is to be our Savior. Save us from hell. And all we have to do is love Him, follow Him, and obey Him. And chase after Him. That's what's so hard about that. And it's easy when it's done by love. It's... 100,000 times easier. So, if you preach His holy name, it softens hard hearts and makes them want to be sorry for their sins and they will go to confession, especially if they've not gone to confession in 70, 50, 40, 30 years. I remember when uh, Mel Gibson's production, The Passion of the Christ, came out. It was, I think, in 2005. And that film had a great effect on many souls. 
and I'm sure uh, other priests could say the same thing. After that, we heard in the confessional, Father, I'm here because of that film, and I have not gone to confession in 70 years, 80 years, 50 years, 20 years. So when we think of our Lord and see all that He suffered for us, who cannot be moved to contrition for sins and our sins? So like oil softens the hard bread, the Italian meals, so oil softens, the name of Jesus softens the hard hearts, crusty with sin. Third example from St. Anthony, if you call upon the name of Jesus, his name smooths rough temptations. And all the saints tell us this, when we're tempted, pray. Immediately pray, especially with uh, common temptations against purity. Pray, say the name of Jesus, say the name of Mary, and flee the occasions of sin. Fourth, if you think on the name of Jesus, his name enlightens the heart. He enlightens the heart with his grace. Remember what St. Peter and Paul said. No one says the name of Jesus except with the help of the Holy Ghost. But you might say, well, the wicked say the name of Jesus. Those who hate our Lord, they say his name all the time and blaspheme. But not with grace and not with merit, actually to their condemnation. So to say it with merit, to say it with love, to say it pleasing to God, it takes the help of the Holy Ghost. So his name enlightens the heart, fills it with his grace. And lastly, if you read his name, it satisfies the mind. Like oil satisfies the body, the name and reading his name, spiritual reading, satisfies the mind. And, and Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other truth. There is not even any physical truth that's not created by him. All the fish in the sea, the tiny bugs of the air, the birds, everything, the planets, the galaxies, was created by the power of His Word. Whose Word? Our Lord Jesus Christ, with the Father and the Holy Ghost in the beginning, from eternity, at the first day of creation. So, to read Him, to read all truth, brings us to Christ. You can study math, Geometry, you can study logic, philosophy, metaphysics, biology, marine life. You can study physics, how na nature works in the physical order. You can study calculus. You can study every branch of science. And it all brings you to Christ. And that's what true science is. It just, you just study the creation of what God made. And you conclude the cause who made it, Jesus Christ, because everything was made through him. So imagine what scientific wisdom Christ really has. Imagine what deep understanding of the, of the cells in the DNA, which is only being discovered, only scratching the surface of what a cell is made up of, but Christ made it. And the whole function of the whole universe, how this whole thing moves with perfect punctuality and perfect order. It's an engineering that modern scientists just, are, they can't even begin to comprehend. And yet, what a scientist, what a mathematician, what a geologist, what a geometrist, what a, calcul a, cal a human calculator, our Lord is wisdom itself. Wisdom itself. So for us Catholics, anything you read that is true, any science you study, is our Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to see everything in Him. That's why it's very important we don't waste our time on frivolities. Use your mind well. Read good books. Read what leads you to the love of truth. And St. Teresa of Avila... She said, I almost lost my soul by reading novels. 
her cousin introduced her to reading novels. So today it would be bad movies and bad uh, websites. And she said, I nearly lost my soul because I got into novels, love stories, and they're just emotional things. But, and she realized this was, a, this was a huge distraction that would take her away from our Lord. So we've got to be careful what we read. We've got to be careful what we watch. And each one of us stay focused on what brings us to the love of Christ. And I repeat, any science and any branch can lead us to Christ because he made everything. But we have to have that vision to see everything in Christ and Christ in everything. See everything in Christ and Christ in in everything, as St. Francis de Sale said. So I close here with St. Anthony here. And take note that this name Jesus is not only called oil, but it's oil poured out. Poured out from where? Poured out to where? Poured out from the Father's heart into heaven, earth, and hell. Firstly, in heaven, the Father's heart pours out to give joy to the angels so that they cry out in exultation in the Apocalypse, chapter 7, salvation to our God who sitteth upon the throne and, and to the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus Christ. That is to say, to Jesus. And the Father's love is poured out on the earth for comforting sinners of which Isaiah the prophet says, chapter 26, verse 8, Thy name and thy remembrance are the desire of the soul. My soul shall desire thee in the night. Because we're in the night of this life, and the next life will be the sunlight of the vision of the Blessed Trinity. And then how is the Father's love poured out in hell? Well, not the hell of the damned, because there's no hope for them. But he means... Limbo and purgatory. To free the captives in purgatory and limbo, so that they are said to have cried on bended knee, Thou hast come, our Redeemer. So, the name of Jesus is music to the ear, honey to the mouth, and uh, sweetness and... Uh, Joy in the heart, melody in the ear, honey in the mouth. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So think of the Virgin Mary. The first time she held the child Jesus on the Christmas night. The first time she saw the eyes of the living God. But not eyes that were just, you know, babies' eyes stare aimlessly when they're, new, when they're little. They can't really focus. But our Lord's eyes in the moment he was born, they were full of focus and full of wisdom. He could read her eyes, she could read his face. That this was not just some baby who didn't know what's going on. She held in her arms the living God. And the love of God, the love, the power of Christ already shining through him. Because as she's holding him 13 days after the nativity, Three kings with their whole entourage arrived to adore him on their knees. And the night he was born, the very night, she's, she wraps him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger. And who comes out of nowhere to adore him? There was no announcement. There was no public announcement in the streets. The Messiah is born. But the shepherds heard an announcement. But they heard it not from men who didn't care about it, but from angels. And the angels told them, and they heard them singing glory in Excelsis Deo, and the angel shepherds came running to the, to the manger. And imagine the thoughts of Our Lady and St. Joseph as they saw shepherds filing into the stable on their knees to adore the real God-made flesh. And they had no doubt. That's why when we kneel down before the Holy Eucharist, when we kneel down and adore Christ at the consecration of the Mass. And right before you receive Him, Domine non sundinus, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
healed with thy grace, that heals the wounds of sin and inflames our hearts with love for him. So let's ask the Virgin Mary to teach us these things. She kept all these things in her heart. In her heart. And that's where we got to go for real wisdom, real love, real growth is the heart of Mary. And the Holy Trinity wants, want to, wants this devotion for our day, our day of superficiality and, and uh, the so many traps of sin, so easy to fall into mortal sin and so easy to fall into hell. We need the heart of Our Lady to learn from her how to love our Lord, how to stay focused on Him, how to win that trophy and fight for Him. Fight for Him. Fight for Him. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.